Imagine a city so crowded, it's actually cooler than the countryside. Sounds impossible, right? Well, buckle up, science lovers, because new research is turning everything we thought we knew about urban planning on its head. And trust me, you're going to want to hear this. Hey there, my brilliant building blocks of knowledge. Theodore here, ready to construct some mind-blowing ideas with you. Today, we're diving into the concrete jungle, quite literally. We've got a crisis brewing in the Netherlands, a country that needs to conjure up millions of new homes practically overnight. But here's the kicker. The solution might just involve packing people in tighter than sardines in a can. Stick around, because we're about to explore how cramming more folks into cities could actually be the key to fighting climate change. Yeah, you heard that right. It's urban planning, but not as we know it. So you're interested in how cities can grow sustainably right. Mm. Balancing the need for more housing with more green spaces. Mm. It's a challenge a lot of cities are dealing with, and it's definitely something we keep seeing in the research we've gathered. Yeah, it's a really important issue. And the Netherlands, with their growing population and limited space, they're a super interesting case study. They're going to need two million new homes by 2050. Wow. Yeah. So imagine trying to fit that many people in a country that's known more for windmills and tulips than for huge cities. It's like they're starting a puzzle, but half the pieces are already gone or something. Right. What are the environmental challenges when you're building on that kind of scale? Well, the impact on the environment is massive. You've got to think about the amount of materials you need just to build concrete, steel, glass. And all of those have a pretty big carbon footprint, you know, just to make them and get them to the building sites. Then there's urban sprawl. So that's where cities grow outwards and kind of eat up the farmland and natural areas around them. And then that causes even more problems because it breaks up the natural environment and makes people rely more on cars, which means higher emissions. So even just building those houses have a ripple effect on the environment before anyone even moves in. Yeah, exactly. And these are all tied to climate change. The IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, they've been really clear in their reports. We're already seeing what happens when the planet warms up. Global surface temperatures are up almost a full degree Celsius since the early 1900s and extreme heat events. Those are happening more often and they're more intense. We've all been seeing that. Yeah, for sure. So we need to address climate change urgently but we also need to find places for people to live. It's like yeah. kind of a tough spot to be in. What does the research say we should do? Well, this is the really interesting part of this Dutch study. Mm. They looked at two main ways to handle those new homes they need, densification and expansion. So densification means you're building more densely within the city's current boundaries. And expansion means you're looking at developing new land outside the city. So it's like building up versus building out. I think most people, if you just ask them, would probably say they like the idea of more space, bigger homes, maybe a yard. You're right. That classic suburbs idea, it's appealing. But the thing is, when you really look at how it impacts the environment, the obvious answer isn't always the best one. The research actually found that making things denser has some surprising benefits. Okay, now you've got me interested. What's so surprising about building up? So one of the big surprises is how much more efficient it can be when it comes to materials. Like, just think about it. When you build taller buildings, you have shared walls, shared foundations. You end up using less stuff per apartment or whatever compared to building a bunch of single family houses that are spread out. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. But do we have actual numbers on that? Like how much of a difference are we talking? Yeah, they found that if you go with densification instead of expansion, you could use something like 20 percent less material per housing unit. Wow. And now think about that multiplied by two million new homes. Yeah, that's huge. Okay, but what about green space? I just can't picture a city full of high rises being very green. See, that's the other surprising thing. The study found that doing more densification could actually give you up to 3% more green space within the cities. Wait, hold on. More buildings equals more green space? How's that even work? 
when you build up, you free up a lot of ground space that you can then use for something else. Like imagine taking all those parking lots and turning them into parks or putting gardens on rooftops, putting more trees along the streets. So instead of everybody having their own little patch of grass in a backyard, you could have these bigger green areas that are all connected throughout the city. Exactly. And remember that IPCC report we talked about, the one that was talking about how dangerous extreme heat can be? Yeah. Well, the Dutch study, they looked at how these different building plans would affect something called the urban heat island effect. And they found that in this one city, Leiden, if they did more densification and added in more green spaces, it could actually make the city cooler by 2050. So it's not just about making the city look nice. It's actually about making it more livable as the climate changes. That's it. Green spaces are like natural AC units, right? They cool things down and make the air cleaner. And that's not just good for the environment, but it's good for us too. It's good for people's health and well-being. Okay, so we've got Less material use, potentially more green space, and a way to fight against that heat island effect. It's starting to sound like densification is the way to go. Are there any downsides? Well, you have to remember that there's no one perfect answer for how to do sustainable urban development. The study shows some big advantages to densification, but it does say that sometimes you need to build on undeveloped land. So it's not always as easy as just saying, let's build up every time. Okay. Let's break this down. You know how your mom always told you to clean your room because tidy space, tidy mind. Well, turns out the same principle might apply to cities. By building up instead of out, we're not just saving space. We're potentially creating a more efficient, cooler, and greener urban environment. It's like Marie Kondoing an entire city. Right. You've got to weigh your options. For example, maybe building on undeveloped land would let you have bigger houses or different types of housing that you couldn't really fit into a dense urban area. Okay. And in some cases, you might even be able to include a lot of green space even when you're building on undeveloped land. Think about it this way. If cities were sandwiches, we've been making them wrong this whole time. Instead of spreading everything out like a sad, limp piece of lettuce, we need to stack our ingredients high. More floors mean less sprawl, which means more room for parks and trees. It's like we're building a club sandwich, but for people. Okay, so then how do you decide which way to go? It seems like you have to think about all the different factors for each situation. Absolutely, and that's what's so helpful about this Dutch study. It gives city planners and people who make policies a way to make smarter decisions about how their city should grow in a sustainable way. So it's like a tool that helps them look at the different options. What are some of the main things they'd want to be thinking about? One big one is just how much land is actually available within the city limits. If there's no more space to build, then expanding might be your only choice. Makes sense. What about other things besides just space? Yeah, for sure. They also need to look at what will happen to the environment if they develop that undeveloped land. What kind of ecosystem is there? Will it be broken up? How far away is this new development from the city center? Because that'll affect how people get around and how much pollution is created. So you get the whole picture, not just one little piece. Yeah, and this is where the IPCC's focus on localized climate solutions comes in. What works in Amsterdam might not be the best fit for a city in Arizona that's growing really fast. Right, because the climate's different, the geography is different, oh. even what the city already has is different. Exactly. And of course, you can't forget about all the social and economic factors, too, like affordable housing is a big one. And having good public transportation and just thinking about what the community needs. So like there's a lot to think about. Yeah. And there isn't just one right answer. You're right. But the good news is that research like this study from the Netherlands gives us a place to start having these really important conversations. Yeah. It helps us make smarter decisions about how to create cities that are good for the planet and good for the people who live in them. So we're using the best info we've got to guide our choices and hopefully build cities that work for everyone. But what does this all mean for someone who's just listening to this deep dive? Like, what can we do as individuals? That's a great question, and it's one we should all be asking. It's easy to feel like these big urban planning decisions are totally out of our hands. Mm -hmm. But you're saying there are things we can actually do as individuals. Oh, absolutely. For one thing, just become more aware of what's going on where you live. 
Are there new developments being planned? What are your local politicians saying about sustainable growth and all that? So, like, don't just ignore those city council meetings. Exactly. Those meetings are a chance for you to actually speak your mind. Mm -hmm. Tell them you want more green spaces or affordable housing that's near public transit. You know, whatever is important to you. It's about making your priorities known, even if it's just locally. Yeah. Exactly. And and think about your own choices, too, about where you live and how you live. Could you walk or bike more often if you were closer to downtown? Are you supporting businesses that care about sustainability? Those things all make a difference. Those are really good things to consider. It's like all those individual choices we make, they kind of add up to a bigger impact on the whole city. That's the idea. Yeah. And don't underestimate the power of talking about these things with like your friends and family or coworkers. The more we talk about this stuff, the more people are aware of it, and that's how we can start pushing for bigger changes. So even though we started with a study from the Netherlands, this is really relevant everywhere, right? It's about how we want our cities to change and what kind of future we're building for ourselves. Exactly. And it's not just about concrete and steel and all that. It's about people. It's right. about having cities that aren't just good for the environment, but also good for the people living in them. Places that are fair and, you know, where people actually want to be. That's a great note to end on. So as you go about your day, think about this. If you had to design a city from scratch, how would you balance the need for housing with keeping the planet healthy? It's a tough question, but we can figure it out together one step at a time. Well, my dear density enthusiasts, we've reached the top floor of today's skyscraper of knowledge. Who would have thought that the key to cooler, greener cities was to pack more people in? It's like playing Tetris, but with entire neighborhoods. As we sign off, I can't help but wonder, what other obvious solutions are we missing because they seem counterintuitive? Keep your minds open and your cities dense, folks. Until next time, this is Theodore, encouraging you to always look up. There might be a green roof garden up there.